Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about August 4th, uh, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, it's a four game slate, um, and we had a pretty good, successful uh, slate last night um, or this morning, rather. Um, uh, so, yeah, we're excited to keep going, keep going our uh, continue our streak, hot streak here. Um, today is going to be a little bit more chalky slate as we have a, you know, pretty good sizable favorites um, in every single one of the matches, frankly. Um, so, yeah, let's dive in. In the LPL, we have EDG uh, versus Team WE. EDG is a favorite at minus 3,500. Um, that might be one of the highest odds that we've seen in a while in the LPL. Um, team WE <clears throat> has been <clears throat> has been one of the worst teams in the LPL this summer split. So, you know, I understand why the odds makers are, you know, putting out these kind of astro astronomical odds. Um, but yeah, I just don't see any path that Team WE wins tonight as well. Um, so I, you know, kind of agree with the odds. Um, and EDG really has the playoff implications, you know, all to their own, uh, you know, to, to play well here. So I don't think they'll have any motivation or reason to take, take the night off or anything like that. So, um, and Team WE is starting, you know, their young starters with Demon again in the top lane. That's going to be exploited by Flandre, who's been pretty good overall in the summer split. Um, so EDG has an advantage there. And then EDG is starting Junjia again in jungle. And he's been better than JJ, or rather EDG has looked better with Junjia in, in the jung in jungle. So um, I like that they're starting Junjia again. And he will probably destroy Vue. Um, Vue hasn't been very good in my opinion, um, ever since he replaced uh, Beishang uh, in jungle. Um, I think Vue has been okay, um, but Junja is better. And then Scout over Shanks. Shanks is not actually bad. I mean, Shanks has been playing <clears throat> decent for Team WE, but too bad his, the rest of the team sucks. And I mean, but still Scout, I probably still give Scout some edge there over Shanks, but like I said, Shanks has been their best player. And then Viper and Mako is probably where the key is uh, for EEG. Um, Viper and Mako played really, really well at the past couple of weeks. Um, and them going up against Shing and Kadaya, um, I think EDG definitely has an advantage there. Shing, Shing and Kadaya have played okay, I think. I mean, they've been better than like the top half of the map for Team WE but there's still no match against Viper and Mako. And I think that's where the huge gap is as well. Um, I think EDG should win this uh, two to zero. And the kill upside is, should be pretty good here. The second match of the day uh, for China is LNG versus Rare Adam. LNG is a modest favorite at minus 450. <laughs> Seems modest compared to EDGs, but I mean, that's still a pretty big odd um, for LNG and LNG notably is starting Panda C again in the top lane, who has been mediocre at best, um, over Ale, um, Panda C, I think, well, first of all, Ale and LNG are going through a lot of issues right now. So I think there are a lot of, you know, talks there between them two, but I think that, you know, part of the reason why Panda C is starting here again, um, and Panda C did not, has not looked that great um, for LNG. So I think that is going to be an interesting matchup between him and Cube. Um, I think Cube is okay, um, but Panda C's, like I said, I mean, he, he's not somebody who can carry a team, in my opinion, um, like Ale. So that, you know, kind of destroys the kill upside there for Panda C. And, and the laning matchup there, but I think that's more of a wash probably in the top lane, if not a little bit of an advantage for Cube. Um, Tarzan and Doin B have not been playing well the past couple of weeks. They've been so up and down and in, inconsistent. They've shown some improvements, I think, in, in the laning phase, 
But in team fights, man, they were they've been really, really bad. Um, I think they've been making some different calls, them doing their own thing, not being on the same page. I think it's more of a synergy issue at the moment. And they're going up against Leanne and Strive, who have been, I mean, okay. I think Leanne has been okay, and Strive actually um, has been pretty bad against other mid laners, in my opinion. Um, so I do think that's going to be a wash there. I think Tarzan probably has a little bit of advantage over Leanne uh, in terms of like the upside. Um, but I think Leanne has been a little more consistent, um, even though the, the floor is pretty low for Leanne. And then the biggest gap for me here, though, is for LNG. Um, Light has been the bright lone spot uh, for LNG. He, he's been playing pretty awesome and playing lights out <laughs> um, with Light and Lamau or Iwandi, whoever it has been uh, for LNG in the support position. But Light has been the most consistent player for LNG. And they're going up against iBoy and Guyana Zora. Zora is starting in support today, just like they did, just like he did um, in the last series for Rare Adam. But iBoy and Zora, or iBoy and Yuyanja, either one, I mean, that bottom lane, including iBoy for Rare Adam, has been horrible, like a nightmare for that team. I think they're just not used to, they probably just still have not you know, gotten adapted to playing in this meta and patch where AD carries need to be more proactive uh, and trying to make plays. Um, but they just like to sit back and farm and try to scale. But that's just not how the game should be played at the moment by AD carries. And frankly, that's been hurting Rare Adam quite a bit over the summer split. As you see, they, um, as you probably know, that they're in one of the last places. I think they're to second or third to the last um, in the LPL in the summer. Um, so I do think that's where the biggest gap is that light for LNG is probably going to have a field day over iBoy and Zora. If not, then iBoy and Zora are just not going to do anything. <laughs> they're probably not going to have much presence or visibility. Uh, you know, any, any pressure, map pressure caused by the rare Adams bottom lane here. Um, so I do think LNG should have a ton of advantage there. And as long as Tarzan plays well, I think, and gets the light going, which I fully expect that he will, then Doing B does not feed. Um, I think LNG should win this matchup. I'm not as entirely confident as the odds indicate at minus 450. Um, but Rare Adam just hasn't been, has been really bad. And they've, they're already out of the playoff contention. Whereas LNG really needs to win this game to stay in the playoff contention against some other opponents. Um, so against some other teams that are in the middle of the pack um, for, in the LPL. So I do think LNG has a lot more motivation here to win. Um, and I do think they'll win LNG uh, probably two to two to one. In the LCK, it's, it's a little more interesting, I think. Um, first, the first matchup is KT versus uh, Fred Brion. Um, they're all starting the regular starters, I expect, except Freddy Brion has some, uh, you know, substitution risk here with Morgan versus Sword in the top lane. And then let's see, and Lava and Hanai and Delight. I think they, I think they should all start here, um, except maybe for in the top lane, who knows. Um, but I do think Morgan should start, but um, Freddy Brion coming off of a fresh win, uh, series win um, against, I think it was... <laughs> Albeda was against a poor opponent in Nongshim, I think. Um, you know, riding that maybe hot momentum, Freddy Brian can pull this off, but KT has been one of the hottest teams in the LCK, along with Sandbox and probably Gen.G. Um, but KT has been really good, especially Aiming and Rascal. Uh, they've been really, really good. And I think that's where the biggest gaps are going to be for K uh, that are in favor of KT. Um, I'm a little worried about the lack of adaptability for cuz and early game advantages that can be um, that, that, that can be the key to victory for cuz that have struggled quite a bit in the early game um, get going up against OMT. Um, but I do think um, KT should win this. I'm a little also a little worried about Vikla versus Lava. Lava played really well in their win against Nongshim, like I said. 
Um, but KT, I think should should roll um, most likely. Um, I think I can definitely see Fred and Brian take a game in the series, but at the end of the day, I think KT should win the series two to one. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be my probably my match prediction two to one uh, in favor of KT. And like I said, I think it's gonna come come, you know, uh, by the hands of Aiming and Rascal. Uh, probably, you know, carrying that team uh, to victory. And the kill upside is okay. I think it's, I think the over under for this matchup was set at 20, 20 or 21, um, comparably like 25 and 26 for the, you know, the LPL matchups. So I think it's not as good as the LPL matchup, but matchups, but, you know, I think it's fine. Um, and then T1 versus HLE. Um, it's going to be a lot more uh, lopsided uh, matchup here uh, in favor of T1. T1 is a big favorite at minus 1,600. Um, they're going to be starting the regular starters most likely. And then HLE, who knows who they're going to start at jungle and then like in the AD carry position. I know uh, Onfleek has been starting quite a bit, but then Willer came in in game three. And he's younger, so I don't know who's going to start there. And then in the bottom lane, you know, AD carry position. I know Sam B got called up last week or two weeks ago and has been starting. But then Chani started, you know, in the game in game three of their last series. So there's a lot of substitution risk. And this is the second LCK matchup. So we're not going to get confirmed starters before the slate locks for DFS purposes. So I was just going to, you know, I was just giving, I'm just giving you a heads up to see, you know, there, if there, you know, there is risk there, then, then, you know, and then I'm like, well, why, why do you even, I mean, do we even need to play HLE? Probably not. I mean, T1 is probably going to win this matchup. They need to win this matchup, like matchups like this to stay in the playoff seating purposes. Um, you know, I know they lost, they had just lost to Gen G. Um, so T1 is probably locked into the second place. Um, but they still need to kind of take care of these, uh, you know, uh, matches and wins. Uh, against inferior opponents in HLE. Um, so T1 should win two to zero. That's all I got. Um, and the kill upside is really low, I think, setting at 20 over under uh, kills total. Um, but T1 should win this. And, you know, I think the biggest probably advantage goes to owner, um, owner over whatever jungler that HLE uh, is going to put out. Um, I think Dudu is okay for H HLE. So I think that should be. An interesting matchup there, but I think owner over the jungle, owner in the jungling capacity should have a field day today. And then in the bottom lane, Gumayushi and Karia have been playing pretty well lately. So I do think that's going to be a big advantage for T T1 as well. Anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, another, you know, LPL probably centric day um, that you should focus in terms of kill upside. Um, but otherwise, um, if you like this video, um, this video was sponsored by TrueDFS. Go check out their channel and, you know, on, on, on YouTube and on Twitter. Um, yeah, please hit the like button below. Uh, that gets me going and, you know, gets TrueDFS going. So please, please hit the like button below. Um, and then also come check out my Patreon. Uh, where I share my exact match predictions and my favorite plays for prize picks, uh, you know, if you're interested in that and those kind of things. But otherwise, yeah, if you have any questions or just want to chat League of Legends, uh, feel free to message me on uh, Twitter at DFS Champ, as you can see on the screen. Have a good one. See you later.